before we start working with large language models in Hugging Face, I first think it's important for us to understand what a large language model is, what's the underlying architecture. Hugging Face has a lot of built-in functionality that automates a lot of the process of building and training these large language models, so you don't have to really understand the underlying architecture. If you want to build your own custom model, then having an understanding of the architecture will definitely help you, but it's not necessary. But I believe it's, it definitely helps you uh, to have a decent understanding of the underlying architecture. So large language models are based off the transformer architecture. In 2017, uh, the first paper on the transformer architecture was released. And this right here, this diagram, is the diagram of the transformer architecture. And so there's two types of transformers. What you see right here in this picture is the seek, it's called a seek to seek or a sequence to sequence transformer. And sequence to sequence transformers have an encoder portion, which is this side right here on the left, and a decoder portion, which is this side on the right. And so the encoder's job in a sequence to sequence model is to take in the inputs, which is a sentence, in our case, a piece of text, then embed it and then process it through this neural network and what comes out of it is an encoded or an, a vectorized representation of that text. And this vectorized representation of that text then gets passed into the decoder if you follow this arrow. And that vectorized representation allows for the computer uh, or the neural network to be able to understand the, the semantic meaning around that text. The other type of large language model that you'll commonly see is called a causal LM. And we'll work with causal LMs like GPT-2 and Hugging Face in this course. But a causal LM is just this decoder portion. So you can imagine just taking away this uh, encoder portion right here on the left, taking it out, and then just keeping this decoder portion. And essentially how it is trained is that this is no longer the output embedding uh, or the outputs right here. The inputs are sent in to the model on this right hand side. They're embedded, processed by the neural network, and then a probability distribution over tokens, not words, but tokens, which are subwords, is outputted. And so essentially, if you wanted to generate a sentence with a large language model, you would start with your prompt that you're inputting right here, and then it would you would process it through the model, and then it would output a probability distribution of what is the next best or next best token to select, and then that token would then be passed back into the model along with the prompt still, and then that would hold the piece of text would be processed. It would output the next best token after that one, and then that token would be attached. And now you'd have the prompt, the two tokens that have just been generated, and then you'd send them back in, generate the next token, attach it, and keep doing that until eventually the model will output an end of sentence token, which notifies us that it's generated all the text it needs to generate to answer the prompt. And that is how the transformer, the causal LM transformer works when generating text. And when it's trained, all you really need to do is when it outputs this probability distribution over tokens, uh, you know what the answer is when you're training it because you're giving it, if you're doing it in a supervised manner, you're giving it the label. We know what the, the next best token is. And so you just take the difference between the next best token and what it predicted and you use that to be able to calculate the loss and then update the parameters of the model. The loss function is usually the cross entropy loss. So that's a little high level overview of how they're trained, how they're used for generating text. And essentially what, how, how they're trained is usually in a three-step process, sometimes a one-step, sometimes a two-step, sometimes a three-step process now. But essentially what you do first is you take your large language model and you train what's called a base LLM. And this base LLM is trained on a large corpus of text and you're only training this model to predict the, predict the next best token in that, on, in that text. And so this model, whenever it's done, uh, training and it's doing very well at predicting the, predicting the next token, it's really only good for auto-completion. So you can think of it like auto-complete, where you input some words, you know, like an incomplete sentence, and then it should be able to generate a plausible and coherent end of sentence. And so that's what the base LLM is. It's mainly just trained on next token prediction, and it's really good for auto-complete when it's done training. 
However, we want our models to do more. We want them to be able to follow instructions. We want, us to be able, we want them to be able to summarize text, translate text, uh, answer questions, and have a conversation with us. And so that's when instruction tuning comes in. And we'll see how to, in this course, how to tune a model to summarize text. And so instruction tuning is, is just you know what it means. It's like you're gonna train this model to summarize a piece of text and then you're gonna train it to be able to do that task or you're gonna train it to be able to translate or you're gonna train it to be able to answer questions effectively given some context and you, or you may train it to do all of them but you're gonna train it to be able to do some sort of instruction. So you're take that base LLM that's only good for autocomplete and then you use that in all the context that it's learned and all the grammar that it's learned and then use it to instruction fine tune it to do some task for, for your use case. But last but not least, finally we're going to align these models by, by fine tuning them using reinforcement learning from human feedback. This is a newer thing that happens. Essentially, the model is going to output, the instruction fine tune model is then going to output a bunch of summarizations or translations or questions or answers to questions. And then we're going to have humans actually give rewards on each one of those responses. And then the model is going to be trained to be able to maximize that, or, that reward to give better summaries, to give better translations, to give better answers that align with human values. And so that is a high level overview of what an LLM, LLM is and how we actually go about training them from base to instruction to re reinforcement learning from human feedback. We're going to learn about base LLMs and instruction fine tuning in this course. So let's hop on to the next video.